fucking fucking useless, honestly. <laughs> One, two, three. One, two, three. Hold on, have you had your teeth done? No, my teeth have been like this for ages. Oh, the lighting is making them really look good. I just sit like that all interview. If I were you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you can include all this. It's isn't definitely it? staying in. Yeah. This is Charlie Parsons for the Stomping Ground, powered by Wow Hydrate and live and available on the zone. I am very makeshift today. The reason you got the link a few minutes late is because I'm at my friend's house. I'm currently in the spare room, uh, which has got no one in, uh, on the hot spot, and uh, and speaking to the to the famous Frank Smith out in Las Vegas. How are you, sir? I'm good, mate. I'm good. I'm just happy you've got friends. Thanks. Whoa. First and foremost. Whoa. <laughs> so I'm. Oh, good. by the way, by the way, I need to donate to your run. Respect. I forgot about it. You messaged about me. The fact that you're doing a marathon is quite wild. Two. Two. Well, I am flying to Tunisia. Anyway, all right, let's see. Yeah, all right, sweet. Let's, let's not go into it. <laughs> wow. Wow. Horrible. No, yeah. first and foremost, I need to donate because it's a very good cause and everyone should get behind parcels and donate. But I'm not going to be jumping in like, you know, the one thing I would say, right, on my honest opinion, you've been posting a lot of the people that drop big peas in, like, oh, he's 500 from this person, he's 200 from this person, he's 500. But you're not really showing respect to the people chucking in 10s and 15s, right? But it all adds up. And I just think, honestly, you should show. No, I'm just being honest with you. Oh, my God. (laughs) You're on pure smoke this morning. No, I'm not putting 500 quid in. I ain't got 500 quid money. No, of course not. Not like all your footballer and like m- mates, you know. El General stuck uh, 500 in. No, and he's tight as anything. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, good luck. Uh, how's Las Vegas? Yeah, good, mate. Good. Good. I've, I was in bed by 9.30 last night, really living the Vegas life. You don't really booze though, do you? So you can't. Not really. I like a couple of glasses of red wine. That's my limitations, mate. Other than that, uh, all, all, yeah. Other, other than that, I'm uh, fully focused. Good on you. Let's talk a little bit about the card then uh, on Saturday night. It's like a almost like a triple slash quadruple header. Eddie said he pushed for the five TV. I say TV. It's like online broadcast now slots. But uh, just just talk me through it. Yeah, massive, look, massive night here in Vegas, obviously at the Fontainebleau, first show here. Beautiful place. If you come to Vegas next time, if you're old enough, you should stay here, Parsons. Um, uh, headline, Richardson Hitchens, big fight for him. Lemos, a tough, tough fight. You know, we've seen Lemos before. He's a big puncher. He, he had a good win against Lee Selby a few years back for a final eliminator for the IBF at a lower weight. You know, he's coming up now. I think it's a big opportunity for both these guys to go on and challenge for the IBF 140 title, you know, and, and fair play to them both because they know at the other end, I know there's a big fight between Subriel Matias and Liam Paro first in June, but the winner has, has got to face the winner of that fight. You know, before that was even confirmed though, that fight, all eyes were focused on Subriel Matias being the IBF champion and not many people want to fight him. So respect to both of them. I think Lemos is going to bring the best out of Hitchens. I think you're going to see an entertaining performance. He came under a lot of fire in his last one. Richardson, you know, it was a boxing masterclass, but he needs to entertain as well. And I think, I think Lemos will bring that out of him on Saturday. Uh, Diego Pacheco, who we believe is a superstar for the future, just 23 years old, worked with him since he was 17. He has got everything that's needed and he's going to rule the division for years to come. You know, another fight for him here and then go on to headline later in the year back in LA. We, we had a great learning fight in November and, you know, he wants to be let off the leash into big fights. So, Big night for him Saturday. Sky Nicholson challenges for a world title. First time doing, you know, first time going for a world championship. Big night for her and sets up big fights. There's a lot of talk around the Serrano fight for her, doing 12 rounds, you know, possibly for that fight. So that's a big one if she can get the win. But Mafood, you know, only lost against Amanda Serrano. She's going to come and bring it. Um, Mark Castro challenges for his first title. He's, you know, I think he's 16 and 0 now, 15 and 0. We've worked with him for a long time. And now's his time to step on into the big fights. And Galau Yafai as well. You know, he is someone who we believe, you know, from day one, he's gone straight into 10 and 12 round fights against some brilliant contenders. And, you know, this is his chance now to step on and move from here into the world title fights, probably early part of next year. 
Uh, Frank, you mentioned uh, Galawi FI. Uh, Eddie sort of first this week spoke about, we know that there was always, look, we've got Sammy Edwards, we've got Yalau, let's make this fight. Uh, it was the first time Eddie, when an interviewer, said that there's actually some intent um, as of where Galau is at now. Uh, Eddie said he'd rather one of the two of them got a world title. Uh, Sonny put out a tweet saying they'll start bringing it up in meetings then. Uh, you like that fight? Yeah, 100%. Look, and we know we've seen how big domestic clashes are and how good they are for British boxing. And, you know, that's a fight we'd love to make. You know, there's been a, a lot of talk about it in the past. And look, Sonny's right as well because it hasn't been raised. I, I, only this week after Eddie said it did I have a few discussions with his team around it. And that, that's a massive fight. You know, whether it's next, whether it's early part of next year, I think, honestly, I think early part of next year, I think for one of them to get a world title and challenge and do it for a world title would be huge. Are you expecting to be pretty back-to-back -back all summer? The schedule's starting to fill up nicely. You get your first trip. I believe it's your first trip uh, for match and boxing over to Puerto Rico. You've got that great fight between uh, Bam, uh, Bam over in Arizona. He's turning into an absolute star. And then there's more that we're just dropping in there. We expect maybe some news on Tokyo reschedule and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, it's non-stop, you know, from this weekend going to next weekend, we go to Manchester, Gill against Barrett, April 20th, Ryan Garcia against Devin Haney, April 27th, Peter McGraw, Next Gen Show, May 11th, we've got a Mexico Mexico show uh, with Rocky Hernandez headlining, May 18th, obviously, is the huge Usyk Fury Undisputed, we've got Joe Cordina and Jaya Pattaya on that card as well. May 25th, Taylor Catterall rescheduled. June 1st, match room v Queensbury, Vivo against Paterbiev. June 15th, Puerto Rico, huge fight, Sabriel Matias against Liam Paro. June 22nd, something coming very soon. That'll be announced next week. June 29th, oh, uh, Estrada against that? Bam Rodriguez. Sorry, you yeah. were on mad fire. Oh, mate. You, were on you just fire. ruined it. That was Do you know, I think, I think what it was is you didn't want... Look, I don't do it with as much passion as Eddie. I'll no, be honest with you. I haven't got you saw in the facial, like I was that the energy was good. Yeah, but you but you just thought, fuck no, it, I'll just disturb June 22nd, him. If I hear something and I need to pick your mm. brains, June You should write it down. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kate It's Kate mm -hmm. Taylor in a in a big clash, I believe. Oh, is it? Yes. Wrong. But anyway, oh. moving on. June 29th, Estrada against Bam Rodriguez. July 6th had a good call just a minute ago again about a British fight for that date. July 13th, working on something in the US. All over the place, mate. We're going to be busy every weekend. It doesn't stop. But anyway, thanks for reading my flow. I appreciate it. Parsons got to go now. Wow. So Katie Taylor, <laughs> then, on that topic, if it's not June 22nd, she has got a big summer fight that you guys are in the process of working on. Uh, it's not an MMA or slash crossover hybrid, whatever you want to call it, opponent. Are you able to give us any clues on that front? No, I don't give clues. Wrong person. You know, much taller version of me, better looking version of me. He is the clue man. I am merely just... Uh, I, I just tell... What's that? The clue man. He gives the clues. <laughs> Head of clues. Uh, no, uh, yeah, no, I'm not telling you anything, mate. I don't know. Let's see. But you seem so sure about it. So maybe it is June 22nd. Oh, who knows? Who knows? Um, who knows? Oh, our interviews are so unserious. Uh, let me pick up on some quotes from Anthony Joshua. He said his initial plan was to retire at 35, which is this year, this October, I believe. Uh, he now sees his retirement in two years. This is with all the Saudi Arabian plans and everything at 87. Um, yeah, says he's only really got... 87? Two... He's going to fight till... He's 87. 37. Right, you're killing me here, mate. Um, yeah, 37. I suppose you can get everything done in that time, really. You can fight, I suppose, next for the vacant IBF or Undisputed, right? Which And then do you think you can do it all in the two years and then retire? He can do everything in two years. You know, he can do everything he wants to do. He can become undisputed champion within two years. Look, I think, you know, he's he will have his thoughts, but, you know, it's when you get to that point. How many times do things change in boxing? How many times do plans change in boxing? But, you know, it's good that he's got some thoughts around what he wants to do. He's done so much in the sport, and I th actually think he'll be respected so much more when he's retired around what he's done. But he's still got so much left to offer the sport. So, Two years is a long time in boxing, um, but he knows what he wants to do and he's going to go and do it. He's in the shape, shape and form of his life um, and it's exciting. And it's good to see someone thinking about making, you know, so many people go on for too long, I'd say, in the sport, you know, and it, but he, it's good to see him, you know, 
making a plan and having a thought about what he wants to do. Uh, Frank, in terms of Anthony Joshua's next... By the way, 87. If he was 87, our lifelong deal would be great, wouldn't it? 87. Be absolutely <laughs> just, just, just a 60-year professional career. <laughs> Shades of the fighters back in the 19, sort of 10s. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> his next fight, a September headline at Wembley Stadium, a Riyadh season event. Is it? I'm, I'm sort of... Uh... <laughs> I don't know, mate. Don't I don't know. know. You can just add. No, uh, no. He, look, he's focused on. He's been very busy. He's been very active. Um, and there's a lot of talk about what's going on. Obviously, it's been very much discussed and spoken about. The the September event at Wembley would be amazing. Um, you know, and let's let's see how things play out. Again, not the clue, man. Until things are done, I'll talk about it when it's done. Because we come under too much fire and too much pressure when we say things. It's not made. And then everyone goes, well, you said this. So it's easier just to let it play out. Well, one that I think might be done, that once again, you're not the clue man, so you're not going to let me know, is Hergovic Dubois. I believe that's going to land on June 1st, but I'm not 100% sure. May well be for the vacant IBF title. I see you're trying to get the shadow away from your face. Respect. Um, yes. <laughs> Jake fight the winner there. I've got a right dead arm as well, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I'm holding it. Yeah. Um, I don't know about that one either, mate. I don't know about the 5v5. Five five. We're still working on it. Let's see who ends up in it. I thought you've made your picks. Who's made their picks? I don't know. Not me. I'm not involved. I am get involved in the big decisions, me, boy. Okay. Um, Just turn up for the good time and vibes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Fabio Wardley has said that his preference would be signing with Matchroom if he had three equal opportunities between himself, Frank Warren and Ben Shalom. Nice to hear that. Yep. Yeah, of course. You know, I love Fabio Wardley. Um, he's a great guy. We've done the majority of his fights um, and we got a good relationship, you know, but he's doing what's right for him and his career in terms of making the most amount of money. So boxing's the toughest sport out there. And he's got to do what's right for him. Um, but yeah, I love him and great to hear that as always. You know, I believe we the best at what we do. I believe we treat people the best. But at the same time, boxing's a short career and you've got to do what's best for you. And that doesn't always mean this fight, that fight. You know, it, it's very much, you know, based on what's around at the time. Um, but yeah, always good to hear that kind of thing. Ben Shalom said he likes that rematch on Sky uh, pay-per-view, swapping the old arms over. Well, I'm a bit tired on the arms. What do you make of that? Yeah, I look, uh, Ben Shalom's obviously desperate to put pay-per-view fights on for Sky. He hasn't really done many. I, I get that. Um, I don't think necessarily that fight's pay-per-view next, just being completely honest with you. I think that could be built over time and be a pay-per-view fight. Um, you know, but look, it was a great fight. I'm not going to sit here. It's a brilliant fight. Any fight that's great like that, any domestic fight that's, that's great like that, is good for the sport of boxing. You know, so it's good for everyone involved. Um, in terms of where he's come out on Talksport and said he'd like to sit down uh with Eddie and have a chat. I know that you yourself have sort of verbal communication. Uh I did speak to Eddie about it yesterday and he said that he didn't really think that there were many fights on a world level that, that you guys could get together and make, apart from maybe, I don't know, the winner of Billum Smith React for an off a tire or something like that. But when you have that level of discourse, I mean, what what do you, what do you make of it all? Look, I, the lights are going up and down. It's all going off in here, mate. Um, look, there's a lot of people I don't get on with, I don't work with, or I don't necessarily agree with the way they do things. If it does, if it delivers the best thing for our fighters, you know, we're never going to stand in the way of opportunities that deliver the best options for our fighters. Now, we're not the issue here. You know, like it's not saying you need to sit down with Eddie. We don't pull. We haven't pulled fighters out of purse bids. You know, we've been willing to work. We've done. We've had multiple fighters fight on boxer shows. We're not causing issues. You know, so people say we go on about it. We get asked questions about it. And just being completely open and transparent. I've, look, Ben doesn't really need to meet Eddie. You know, like I've spent time with him. I've had meetings with him. You know, if we can get deals done, we'll get deals done. You know, so. Isaac Chamberlain, we believe, is a free agent. Uh, with Chev being mandated for his titles at the Cruiserweight division, do you maybe explore trying to do that fight away from purse bids? I know that they've got their thing going on with Vidal Riley, etc. But do you maybe try and reach out to Mick Hennessy and Isaac's team about trying to make that fight for the British and Commonwealth? 
Yeah, look, uh, it's computer. Originally, I thought he was with Boxer. We made some offers to Boxer. I don't think they've taken them. You know, whether uh, that's, you know, Hennessy. It... Offers. Sorry? Yeah, we have previously yeah, okay. sent offers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think that they're obviously very much focused, I, I, I think, on doing this for our Riley fight. Let's see. We'll go to the purse bids next week and we'll see what happens next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Okay. Well, I'll catch up with you in Manchester on that one then. Uh, Connor, Ben, I understand that the grounds are all very confidential, hence why yourselves, Connor, UCAD, the British Boxing Board of Control, haven't released anything. So I'm not going to sort of try and get any more comment on that front. But just on, on sort of first hand as, as Matcher and Boxing run operationally, what are your next movements in terms of Connor? You don't want to keep him out of the ring, right? You want to make sure the whole thing was about sort of gaining momentum this year. I mean, well, what's your current movements given the circumstances? Yeah, look, I think he's kept momentum. You know, he, he's been busy. You know, he's been back in the ring. He's had fights and, and the right type of fights that have given him tests, you know, not walkovers that he's gone in there again. That's what he needs after so long out of the ring. I think the focus is still for us. We want him to fight in the UK. He is in the top four names in British boxing right now. And we want him to fight in the UK. Hopefully, as soon as things can be spoken about, they will. As you say, all of those parties involved. We're, we're not directly involved in the day-to-day -day back and forth of this. You know, we're essentially a third party, you know. But we want to we want to see him back in the UK boxing. And that's very much the focus for us. So hopefully, new soon. Uh, Joseph Parker with a prime lockdown video call out of Dillian White. Amazing. Um I don't know if it has much to do with you guys, but is it a fight that you know you'd like to see on one of the shows out in Saudi Arabia or maybe something you stage in the UK? Have you spoke to Dillian's team? Obviously, the same as Fabio's. Hit me. I don't know, look, I haven't spoken. Eddie speaks to Dillian's team, you know, in the past a lot. Um, it's a great fight. You know, we saw that fight many. What well, feels like many years ago now, probably what six years ago, something like that. Seven years ago, feels like. It doesn't feel that far away, but it was a great fight the first time around. I think Joseph put him down in the final round, didn't he? Put Dillian down. Um, and there's definitely, you know, the, it's the kind of fight Dillian would need as well to set himself up for those fights. If he wants to be in the discussion amongst the likes of, you know, Wilder, all those names, that's the kind of fight he would need to win. You know, so it's a, it's a great fight. Let's see. Am I right in saying for the 5v5 out in Saudi that obviously with Ray Ford coming out and saying that it won't be him, Eddie confirmed yesterday, very unlikely to be Ray Ford in the 5v5, that it's going to be uh, either Josh Warrington or Lee Wood. And even Lee Wood at 126 is probably a bit of a push now. Does that only really leave you with Josh Warrington? We could move someone up a few weights. You know, let's see. Move someone down a weight. I don't know. You don't know? I don't know, mate. Again, you do uh... That's, but that's that a Eddie job, say. I get it's your job, but it doesn't mean I have to play up to and give you every. I'm I'm look, I'm not getting in trouble for saying things, you know. But you when we move, saying things. I always get in trouble. It's the most trouble you've ever been in for saying something you shouldn't um, have said. Go on, give us an example. Build build a gate, maybe. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> probably probably didn't go down too well, did it? Over uh, in Orlando. <laughs> Wasn't the best three or four days, was it? But, uh, you know, uh, on we go. <laughs> um, no, it's... Uh, look, I am not telling you any secrets. Okay, no secrets. I'm going to go uh, two more quick ones because I can see your arm's about to fall off. Um, Canelo, Shaking now. Canelo said he wants the Dimitri Bivol rematch. Uh, I know that you get on with Vadim uh, and Dimitri. I know Eddie's contact is more with Canelo directly, but after the Munguia fight, you like to maybe reach out and do something again. I don't really, no one really seems to know what's going on with the whole PBC and Amazon Prime deal. Look, yeah, Dimitri Bivol's got uh, uh, the hardest fight, you know, probably one of the toughest fights against Arthur Baturbiev on June 1st. Undisputed, that's very much his focus right now. Not looking beyond that. Um, it's been something that has been called out for for a long, long time. So that's that's what the, the focus is today. Let's see how things play out, you know. Um, but ever we'd love to see the, the Canelo rematch at some point, 100%. What do you think of Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson? It's now got head guards. Uh, don't Has it? Yeah, Actually. Unless there's a KO. I think so, yeah. It's gone a bit exhibition vibes. I don't know. The, the, the thing is, I kind of think if Mike Tyson lands a punch from Jake Paul, he knocks him out. But do you not? I, just, like, I don't know. Like you, you must. He still must have a big punch, Mike Tyson. Against Tyson. Roy Jones the other year. 
No, I don't. I, I, to be honest, it, I never really watched it. It was. I mean, it talking. shouldn't be. It, it should. I, I don't really think it should be happening. But part of me at the same time thinks I don't know who's going to win. Yeah. Like, <laughs> which again is a bit worrying. But each their own, mate. Each their own. All right, Frank, you've got the non-ceremonial weigh-in. No, the ceremonial weigh-in. That was the most dumb thing i yeah. said in my mm. life. Uh, I will see you next week in Manchester. Don't know what the crack is. I'm sure it will be fun. Final message to the viewers. I'm sure you want to put the phone down. Bosh. Tune in live to Zone Saturday night from Las Vegas. Then the week after that. 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 Not going to do it again because you ruined my flow. Thanks very much, Parson. See you later. See you later, mate.